and it was just uh, it was a pretty cool way to to teach. My I became a student a couple of years later. Um, my classmates were not my competitors. They were there really to draw on the same team. I mean, your success did not diminish me kind of thing. Um, but, and that's all well and good and easy to say, but let's see, what does it take to get into medical school? It's a bit of a competition, isn't it? Yeah. And when you get here, I assume you very quickly get the sense of a hierarchy. Know that you're on the bottom. There are other guys of varying uh, lengths of their white coat or amount of gray hair or both of the above that, that factor into that hierarchy. Um, and so, all right, in that environment, where you're thinking, I think you're more attuned as students to impression management than you are to willing to be vulnerable and show what it is you don't know. Because the worry is, well, if I look like I don't know what's going on, that will reflect badly on my force or evaluation letter of recommendation and I won't get the orthopedics or derm residency that I want, et cetera, et cetera. So, you know, if we have a show of hands, uh, so who's willing to show what they don't know? Hmm, funny, no hands went up. And, and that's really typical. But the, uh, what happens is that, that learning suffers. If I'm more concerned about how I look in front of who are evaluating whether I'm conscious of that evaluation or not, and I'm less focused, it becomes the background noise and it's uh, harder to learn. So, we could hit the next slide. This format is always a little difficult, I think, because we've got people remote and people here. But there's a survey, it's a Likert scale thing, and we can go to the next uh, thing. Just to give you a flavor of it, don't worry about reading the detail here, but it's a, a brief survey that I've administered to all of the classes. Uh, it's a five point Likert scale, strongly disagree to strongly agree. The maximum score would be five. Some of these items are reverse scored. And, uh, and what did we find? I mean, you can look at a, a couple of these things and uh, it will give you a, a flavor of the survey and programming for this one thing. Um, so what did I take away from surveying all of the classes? That in general, people feel okay here, relatively safe, Clearly safer when they're dealing with their peers or people who are closer to them on the hierarchy. People of the same gender, in terms of residents, you know, attendings, not so much. Uh, the former dean of the institution, you know, or, you know, let me stand up and lord this over you kind of thing. Well, um, how willing are you going to be to just sort of blurt out something that you worry is not on target? So the idea is that I think you need to figure out ways to shrink that difference, you know, shrink the hierarchy and, and get uh, supervisors, drivers of learning, tutor group leaders, uh, election on lecture givers in big rooms, you know, how do you get people to speak up as opposed to silence is so pretty and tolerable and I'm waiting for somebody and I'm just going to wait till it's, you know, that, that's difficult. So the next one. But 
So we're okay, but there's always room for improvement. This is uh, Deb Clayman's advice, and I, I really like it a lot. As good as an education system that we have, if it ain't broke, make it better, is her saying. And so what we want is a, a continuous quality improvement mindset. Um, so I ask students, you know, tell me, what do you think? You know, I, I actually ask them to name, you know, who's the safest, the, the, the faculty member that you feel safest approaching or the least safe. And, uh, and then ask to you know, give me some terms that would descri describe that person. And these are some of the terms that, that came out. Um, someone who makes you, you know, they're glad that you're there. Um, it's interesting. They know your name or they use your name. What a concept. Uh, they're encouraging, supportive. They're clearly listening. Now, the non-judgmental part is hard because I think as students, you suspect that everything you do is being judged. Big Brother does exist and he is watching you kind of thing. And again, that'll make you sort of pull back and try to impression manage as opposed to just let it hang out. So I think faculty who are willing to be vulnerable and in simple ways. You know, when I was an M2, I had, you know, I just couldn't figure out how to do a neurologic exam in the time that was allotted. I mean, there were so many moving parts and I couldn't remember what to do next and that sort of thing. And, but after doing the neurology clerkship and doing it you know, six times a day, day after day, I got a routine down. And I mean, so sharing, you know, when we were in your shoes, I think helps. It makes you think, well, you know, again, it's shrinking that hierarchy and making you closer to the students. So the next slide. Um, so how to do this? Um, letting people know why we're here. This is important. Taking care of patients can be a life and death experience. And, you know, it, it may seem strange, but here I am at my age, having taught or been a trainee for the last 50 years, just sort of learning from personal experience what patients feel. I lived a disease-free, pill-free life until 2023. Unusual as it turns out. But when you get a diagnosis, as a student, you think, I solved that guy's problem. I'm making a contribution. I've got him on the road to recovery or, you know, I'm treating his hypertension so he won't have a, a stroke or heart attack. But for the patient, you go, oh, geez, I used to be healthy. Now I've got this and I've got to take these pills for the rest of my life. And so you're reveling in your ability to make a diagnosis, whereas the patient is not exactly applauding you alongside. And it took me 50 years to figure that out. I probably should have gotten sick sooner. You know, I would have been more appreciative. Um, the other thing is the, the whole idea of fallibility. We've all heard about medical errors. So there's nothing like, you know, all right, this patient needs a nephrectomy 
and because it's got recurrent pyelonephritis or you know dilated ureter on the right side and blah 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 you're all set and um you're scrubbing in and the surgeon's got a reputation not only for being a real hard ass but letting students get to play if they you know um and you go in and you notice that the left flank has been prepared for surgery. It's strange, I thought we were doing the right, but I'm the low guy on the totem pole here. And we've got the attending and the chief resident and some other surgical intern and whatnot. And Surely they must know what's going on. Keep your mouth shut. And the good kitten gets removed. And you could have saved the day. But if I, the attending, am a bully who intimidates students, that's going to quash any desire or willingness on your part to speak up. And so by my saying, you know, we're a team here. You may notice something that I missed, or I don't know. I want you to point it out. And when you do, thanks, that made a difference. But we've got to create the atmosphere that facilitates that. And again, I think we do pretty well here, but we can do better. And that's what, what I'm attempting to do. And I'm literally going department by department, and in some cases, division by division. I think tomorrow I've got colorectal and somebody else, some other surgical division. And, uh, and I'm hoping that I don't get blown off, you know, by they'll be eating their lunch or their breakfast and yeah, yeah, hmm. tell somebody who cares. Uh, because using an example like the wrong kidney, okay, now that I have your attention, because those things have happened and surgeons know, maybe they weren't scrubbed in on that case, but they know somebody who, was involved in a wrong site surgery or its equivalent. And uh, so I, I hope it matters and I hope it impacts the, the culture of this institution. And it's something that you guys, when you look at residencies, ought to be thinking about and looking for. Uh, you know, do you want to go to the big name place that beats up, you know, that eats its young? Well, not a good atmosphere in which to learn. You want to feel comfortable. This one. So, again, there's a tendency in for any of the residents who I thought or hoped, well, they'll be in the audience when I go department by department. Um, again, we can get enamored with the long white coat and our status. And view ourselves as the sage on the stage. I have the answers. I'm talking down to you and telling you. And, and that's why uh, posing things as questions. What if this patient were this or that? And engaging and encouraging the audience, the team, the listeners to, to speak rather than say, this is the gospel according to Kevin Dorsey. I expect you all to be taking notes. Uh, you know, I, I think, what do you think? Why did you think that? I think that's a good idea. Anybody else kind of thing? And, uh, and I think if leaders do that, uh, it help reduce this hierarchy and bring people in. The other thing I've thought about, I've never done this in a, it's difficult 
small groups are maybe easier because I can just make eye contact or nod or, you know, remember somebody's name and, you know, call on them. In, a, in an amphitheater, you know, who raises their hand? Well, oftentimes, and you know who they are, they're the guy who wants to hear the sound of his own voice. You know, it's the, why is it the same people who are always answering the questions? Um, but I wonder sometimes whether it's good to have a, a sort of what I call a, a quiet plant in the audience, you know, someone who is willing to sort of, you know, timidly raise their hand and, and I get to call on them and they ask a, a question or say, I'm not clear on that or, or whatever to sort of help keep the discussion rolling. So let me get on the next slide. We're getting close to the end here. So that was at the end. Yeah. Okay. So anyway, those are some of the tips that I uh, have learned in reading. If, if you want to, students won't have time for this, but uh, the book by Amy Edmondson, I think it's called The Fearless Institution or something like that. It's a good and quick read, uh, but definitely look at her two YouTube videos. Uh, they're, they're well worth the eight minutes that you'll spend combined. So, all right, let me open it up for discussion, questions, comments. Uh, you know, uh, what do you see in your learning experience here? I mean, if I guessed it pretty adequately that we do good, but could be better. Uh, that's a fair, we're getting some heads nodding in the room here. I don't know what you folks online feel, but anybody have any uh, comments, concerns, 